up, YouTube? So, it's your girl, Mariah Dejil, and I am finally just birthing the baby, okay? So, on today, I hope you guys will join me in my journey in discovering yourself, and we're going to do this thing together from here, okay? So, with that being said, on today, I present to you, Discovering You, The True You, presented by Mariah Dejil, your girl, okay? Now, <laughs> we're going to go ahead and have a look here. How y'all been today? I hope you guys had a pretty great morning so far arriving, because here, it's been so rainy and just so, ugh. but... You know what? I made a mess of it. I'm getting work done. So that's just going to be what it is then. But right here we see, who are you? Have you ever asked yourself, who am I? Like, who am I? What am I doing here? What am I doing with myself? I know I have. I have. Because there came a point in life where it was just like, it has to be something more than this. There has to be something greater. I became tired. Y'all ever been tired? I know I have. But on today, we're going to go ahead and start off with some scripture, right? First, we got Matthew 6, verse 22, chapter 6, verse 22. And it says, Your eye is like a lamp that provides light for your body. When your eye is healthy, your whole body is filled with light. But when your eye is unhealthy, your whole body is filled with darkness. And then we have Matthew 6 and 33, chapter 6, verse 33, if you take a note. So we got, seek ye first the kingdom of God above all else, and live righteously, and all else will be added unto you. And then we have Genesis 32 and 30. So chapter 32, verse 30. And then we have, So Jacob called the name of the place Pini, saying, For I have seen the face. Now I have seen God face to face, excuse me, and yet my life has been delivered. Genesis 3, verses 5. For God knows when you eat from it, your eyes will be open. God knows when you eat from it. Now, your eyes is going to be open. And you will be able to be like God, knowing good and evil. So in Genesis, of course, we know at that time they were talking about the tree. Right? The tree. Eating from the tree. Eating, eating from the tree. All right? And we're going to go into a lot more of these in detail. But we're just going to go ahead and press forward here. All right. So we're going to take it back to the basics, right? Hold on, guys. Una Let me put this key again. All right. So hopefully... Y'all could hear me. I ain't realized how loud it was until I started trying to explain myself. But we're going to take it back to the basics, okay? So the life, we talking about the base of everything, the start of creation, right? In the Bible, they tell us there was darkness, right? And God moved himself amongst this darkness and call forth the light, right? So going back to the basics, we talking about the darkness that was there prior to 
the light being called forth, right? Now you got to remember that you are the light. But to start off here, carbon is a primary component of all known life on earth, representing approximately 45 to 50% of all dry biomass. Carbon compounds occur naturally in great abundance on earth. It don't die, it only multiplies. <laughs> okay. Complex biological molecules consist of carbon atoms bonded with other elements, especially oxygen in which we breathe and hydrogen and frequently also nitrogen, phosphorus, as well as sulfur. Now, with this next thing, do keep in mind that this is going to go both ways here. I'm going to give you the full breakdown with the 666, okay? So just one of them to start with, carbon has six protons, six neutrons, and six electrons, which gives us the 666. And if you were grown up back in the day in church, we were told about the market of this, which, you know, the number is 666 on that. And we're going to explain that on a actual physical reality level as well here. But just to start off with, carbon. It does have six protons, six neutrons, six electrons. And we're going to have a look here and see what my good man here has to say about melanin and carbon. Okay? Melanin, and why is it so powerful? Melanin is a molecule. And Dr. Sabe used to always tell me, you're always talking about melanin, but what you have to really look at is carbon. Carbon is the atom. It's like cosmic glue. You have, basically, you have other atoms and elements, but you basically have four major on the Earth oxygen, nitrogen, hydrogen, carbon. You can put no more than four together, nitrogen, hydrogen, oxygen. You can put part of hydrogen, two parts of oxygen together, you have water. You can put two parts of hydrogen, two parts of oxygen together, and uh, uh, you have hydrogen peroxide. You can do the same thing with nitrogen, but you can't put no more than four atoms together to create anything. Once you introduce carbon, the black, once you introduce carbon, you create the millions and billions of molecules that exist. Carbon is the cosmic glue. It is the evidence of everything and all that exists. Because when, when you go outside, you look up into the heavens, what do you see? You see blackness. That's cosmic melanin. But the way in which it represents itself on the planet comes from the greenness in plants and basically the melanin that is in uh, human beings and animals too. And so melanin is a molecule that becomes very important as it relates to life. That, that is why you judge, you have, a, you know, you have the carbon-14, nitrogen-14 dating because you can tell how old something is by the life of the carbon that's within that particular thing that you're looking at, the organism that, you, that you're looking at. So that carbon is the actual stuff of the cosmic universe. And if there is life outside, it's going to be black. So don't be bringing no Europeans down here as extraterrestrials, because they don't exist. When the spacemen come from outer space, they're going to be black or brown. All right, we're going to chop it there, That's the stuff of the universe. And we're going to go ahead and press forward. But that's some powerful stuff my man's had to say about some carbon and some melanin, huh? Okay. Okay. All right, y'all. I'm back here. So we got, we're going to go ahead and move forward. Stars are known as nanodiamonds. 
star. We're going to talk about the guy jeans. And let me move myself out the way because I do have another another clip up there for y'all as well. So I'm going to jump on this side. So we're going to talk about the guy jeans, okay? The melatonin molecule contains a total of 33 atoms. That's important because also remember Christ died at the age of 33, right? There are 16 hydrogen atoms, 13 carbon atoms, two nitrogen atoms and two oxygen atoms. A chemical formula of melatonin can therefore be written as, and you see the little description every there. Once produced, it is secreted into the bloodstream and the cerebral spinal fluid, the fluid around, which is the fluid around the brain and the spinal cord and conveys a signal to distant organs. So the melatonin in which, you know, people with that little spot where people was giving that to their kids or whatever to help them sleep better. So the melatonin is, it does generate within our bodies at nighttime, right? So, and that melatonin pretty much once it's produced within our cells, um, it then also through a process within our bodies, creates the melanin as well. And that melanin can be seen physically throughout our skin, right? Um, but once it's produced, it's secreted from the bloodstream. So it comes from the bloodstream and the it creates the cerebral spinal fluid or it conveys the signal from the cerebral spinal fluid, right? The melatonin produces melanin, again, which we can see through our skin. And is a direct reflection of how much energy one can withstand. Um, the darker the pigment, the more energy. You ever heard the uh term the blacker the berry, the sweeter the juice? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, that's why that's why they be so sweet because it's so dark that it takes in more energy and it just becomes so sweet, right? So um the melanin molecule contains a total of 34 atoms and there are 10 hydrogen atoms 10 carbon atoms two nitrogen atoms and four oxygen atoms a chemical a, a chemical <laughs> a chemical formula of melatonin can therefore be written as you see there okay um and we also going to talk about where the melatonin is secreted and that's what makes this very important but let's hear what my boy got to say right quick um about melanin once again here okay it's a pleasure being here i'm glad you were able to come it takes a lot to come to these things you know a lot of times things work against you when you're trying to do something positive we're going to uh, over the subject called melanin. Uh, in the book, so I know we don't have to. Um, like, uh, yeah, so the, on the first page, it has the word I'm dealing with there. Now, melanin is commonly associated with the, the color of your skin. And that's what gives your skin its color. We call that pigment, uh, melanin. But it's also in your nervous system, which causes you to transmit information faster and to store more information than any other race. It's also in your bones, which causes you to retain more minerals than any other race. And of course, it's in your muscle that cause you to have what we call fast twitch reaction. You have a faster reaction time. And you have more vitamins and minerals in your muscles than any other race. Melanin is also in your eyes that cause you to absorb more color than any other race. And of course, it's in your ears, you absorb more sound. So you will see colors differently than anybody else and you would hear differently. So therefore your music will always be different. You always put together colors differently. Melanin is in your taste buds, which cause you to have the ability to taste the full flavor of the food, to absorb more, more taste. Yes, Lord, it's so, so you always good. combine your food differently and you eat somebody else's food and say, 
that's bland or whatever you want to say. You know what I'm saying? That's because they are not. They don't have the ability to taste the full flavor of food like you do. The melanin causes you to have this ability. It's what we call the biochemical marker of life. The more melanin you have, the more civilized you are. The more melanin you have, the more psychic you are. The more... See what I'm saying? What I'm saying the more melanin you you have, the more human you are. And that is what we're talking about. We're talking about how to understand this unique ability to be human, to be melanated, and how to sustain it. The problem with this melanin is that all drugs work by destroying melanin. It's not a drug unless it can destroy melanin in some way. It has to speed it up, slow it down, or destroy it. But they use different terms when they talk about melanin. They won't say melanin. They may say melatonin, which is made from melanin. Or they may say serotonin, which is made from melanin. These are hormones that are made from melanin. So you read in the literature, say melatonin. All right. So he has some pretty tough stuff to say as well about melanin. But we're going to get into, uh, again, back to the basics with things. So where is the melatonin secreted from? But now we've gained the understanding that the melatonin, it, you know, comes from our bloodstream and the cerebro in the cerebro <laughs> spinal fluid i keep struggling with this word y'all but and that's basically the fluid around our brain as well as our spinal cord and that melatonin once it goes through its processing and sends out those signals to the organs the body converts it and creates the melatonin which can physically be seen through the color of our skin right and remember the black the bear, sweet the juice, y'all. But that melatonin, where's it secreted from? Pineal, where Jacob saw God. The main function of the pineal gland is to receive information of the state of the light dark cycle from the environment and convey the information to produce and secrete the hormone melatonin. So basically, everything within your environment allows your body, your temple, your vessel to convey the state of the light dark cycle. So to know when to do things, your day and your night. Just like they say the sun and the moon go in cycles. This is what this, that pineal gland is set is your, well, we're going to get into it. The pineal gland is the first gland developed in your body and appears in Homo sapiens, a mere three weeks after conception. There are five things that the pineal gland is responsible for. It's your inner eye, sensing light and darkness. It's your biological clock. It tells our bodies when to do its functions. Its functions, my bad, y'all. It is our pacemaker. It sets the pace or rhythm for the body. Okay. It's our compass. It helps us orient ourselves. So it, it basically tells us how to function. Okay? Balance. Keep balance. Production and secretion of two biologically key hormones, which would be serotonin as well as melatonin. Okay? And we've already gotten into how that's produced and how it comes about, how it looks in your skin and all of that. But this is what it looks like in your head. It's within self, okay? So anytime you see somebody say that, you know, there's a reference in text about somebody seeing God outside of um, an actual physical manifestation of God, such as Christ, the Son of Man, or um, we saw in the beginning where he ex revealed himself as fire in a bush, right? So... Those are what you're going to call physical manifestations of the spirit of God. But outside of that, it's going to be within. Now, there are signs and wonders. There are through everything. <laughs> you can see God in everything. You just have to build that personal relationship with God so that you can get an understanding within yourself about self. Right? 
because in trusting God to reveal himself to you, it'll help you to discover who you are as a person. Okay? But my boy Jacob here, we're going to get into his story about how he saw God. And taking all of this information, we're going to apply it to the story, okay? So let's see here. I'm gonna go ahead and press forward, y'all. All right. So Jacob wrestling with God, the breakdown. Okay. First, we're gonna get into the story, and I love to read this story, y'all. It hit differently for me, but I'm gonna make sure y'all stick with me. Stick with me. We're gonna do new share, and we're gonna make sure. Okay, yeah. Share y'all over here with me. All right. So boom. And excuse all my tabs open. They give me OTD, but I think. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> so Jacob prepares to meet Esau. Jacob also went on his way and the angels of God met him. So in this story, we're talking about a guy named Jacob within the Bible. Um, he is going to prepare to meet his brother. If you don't know the story, Esau is his brother, right? And he's on his way to go meet them and he runs into some angels from God okay so when Jacob saw them he said this is the camp of God so he named that place Mahanam y'all see it yeah <laughs> Jacob sent messengers ahead of him to his brother Esau in the land of Seir the country of Edom so and Jacob, right, he on his way, he done came across some angels. He done named the place where he seen the angels. He named it that M name. I don't want to butcher it again, but he named it that M name. So Jacob then, in turn, sent his messengers. Jacob, in turn, sent his messengers. And I'm sorry about that, y'all. Jacob, in turn, sent his I'm sorry about that, y'all. So Jacob sent messengers ahead of him to his brother Esau in the land of Seir, in the country of Edom. He instructed them, this is what you are to say to my Lord Esau. Let's pause here. So Esau, right, is his brother. This is his brother. And he just called his brother my lord. Excuse me, like, what in the world is going on here? He instructed them, this is what you are to say to my lord Esau. Your servant Jacob says, I have been staying with Laban and have remained there till now. So he's saying, look, bro, I've been over here. Okay? But at the same time, Pete, how he's saying your servant Jacob, for one, he done called him my lord. He talking to his brother. He done called his brother my lord, okay? And now he's saying, your servant, Jacob. Not your brother, Jacob. Your servant, Jacob. Okay? So, one, one has to wonder, like, what in the world is going on here? But let's move on here, y'all. We're going to get into it and see what's got to be said. I have cattle and donkeys, sheep and goats, male and female servants. Now I am sending this message to my Lord that I may find favor in your eyes. Bro ain't just, bro ain't just, you know, sending or going his, calling him my Lord. Then saying he is serving. Bro is sending him some whole farms. Okay. <laughs> my God, Jacob is sending him some whole farms like he's sending him cattle donkeys sheep goats male and female servants he's sending him some slaves too y'all now i am sending this message to my lord that i may find favor in your eyes so i'm sending all of this stuff to you in addition letting you know that i'm your servant and i'm just doing all this just so i may be able to find just a little bit of favor and grace in your eyes like lord what could possibly have jacob so scared of his brother that he feel like he got to do all this, right? 
So when the messengers returned to Jacob, they said, we went to your brother Esau, and now he is coming to meet you, and 400 men are with him. Brother, uh, my God, Jacob, he done did all of this. He done sent all that stuff over there, y'all. He done sent the whole farm. Okay, my boy done sent the whole farm. And his brother's still coming after him. And guess what? He ain't coming alone, bro. Coming with 400 men with him. Someone can imagine in great fear and distress, Jacob divided the people who were with him into two groups. Jacob's scared now, y'all. Jacob's scared. He's like, look, we got to get out of here. All right. He divided the people into two groups and the flocks and herds and camels as well. So everything that he had, he took it and he split it into two groups. He thought if Esau comes and attacks one group, the group that is left may escape. So even, oh my goodness, could you imagine having the spirit of Jacob? Even in his moment of distress, he still were trying to take care of other people. Even when Jacob probably thought like, yo, I'm I'm finna go and I might have to take some people with me, but at least I can save this group of people. That's what you call grace. That's what you call grace. So, in fear, he done split the people up. He said, I can save this one if I can't save the other one. And then Jacob prayed, oh, God of my father, Abraham, God of my father, Isaac, Lord, you who said to me, go back to your country and your relatives and I will make you prosper. Jacob only went back over there because he had a promise. Jacob made a decision to choose himself and God. And now he done found himself in a bond. Jacob done found himself in a bond. He having to do all this. He having to cash out. He, he having to send whole slaves of people over there to his brother Esau. And Esau is still coming. And this time he coming with 400 men. Okay? So let's see. But Jacob, he stayed gracious. He still tried to save people. Okay? And then he went to God. You see that there? That's the heart of Jacob. <laughs> that's true character okay so go back to your oh you don't want to tell me i will make you prosper i am unworthy of all the kindness and faithfulness you have shown your servant i had only my staff when i crossed this jordan but now i have become two camps see this is why they say double <laughs> this is why they say double because you have to understand, oh my goodness, I got to grab my notebook, y'all. Can we y'all go, please go grab my little, oh, but can you slide it down here a little bit? My binder, y'all. This is what they say about increase. When I released that word the other day about increase, this is what they say about increase. Increase, increase, increase. You got to understand the power of your increase. Okay. So we got income versus increase, okay? Your income is the money received on a regular basis from your employer or whatever it is that you're in self to invite, provide yourself employment, okay? Versus increase. Increase is the instance of growing, becoming, and making greater. If you need scripture, you can go look at Proverbs 13 and 11. Okay. So Jacob, he didn't know what he was walking into, but he done found himself as an, in a position where he having to cash out, do all of this. People still coming. He having to save other people, still, still having to take care of other people. Why? Because God gave him double for staying obedient. Let's move on, y'all. <laughs> Let's move on. That, that, that got me excited there now. So save me, I pray, from the hand of my brother Esau, 
for I am afraid he will come and attack me and also the mothers with their children. Mothers, this this is why I keep I keep saying and I have been saying for the longest of time, it's time to get in position. You have to get your houses in order. You have to. You have to. If not, for your sake, think about your babies. Because really and truly, that's what they after. These phones, these tablets, these everything that a child could get their hands on that's electronic. And half the time, only God knows what they're watching. Because they sneaking stuff in there. They sneaking stuff in there. I'm going to go ahead and tell you. They sneaking it in there. Subliminally. They know for a child, that's the first thing that develops. It's all the way open. So their imaginations, they can see straight through the veil. You have to protect them. But we're going to move forward, y'all. He crying out for help from his brother. Could you imagine? I know y'all y'all siblings done fought sometimes. Y'all done had a thump sometimes. But could you imagine crying out to God because you're so afraid that not only for yourself, but you're scared for the mothers. And understand that it ain't just the staff that you came over there with. No, now you got double the trouble. It takes it take some strong faith, y'all. <laughs> it takes some strong faith, y'all. He done prayed out to God. But you have said, I will surely make you prosper and will make your descendants like the sand of the sea, which cannot be counted. So, again, he had to remind God of his promise. Like, look, God, I'm here for you, man. <laughs> Help me out. Save me. I did what I felt like I needed to do, but God, uh -uh, that, that, that wasn't right for me. I know there's greater. There has to be greater. So he spent the night there. And from what he had with him, he selected a, a gift for his brother Esau. Excuse me, y'all. Pay attention, ladies. 200 female goats, 20 male goats, 200 ewes, <laughs> and 20 rams, 30 female camels with their young, 40 cows and 10 bulls, 20 female donkeys, and 10 male donkeys. He put them in care of his servants, each herd by itself, and said to his servants, go ahead of me and keep some space between the herds. So he sent everybody off, he split up the tribes, and he done cried out. He said, I'm going to stay here. I'm going to find some solitude. I need some time to myself. Y'all go ahead. Okay? He done gave it this time. He felt like he done gave everything he had to give. And he was weary. And he had to go recharge himself. He needed some time to himself. Okay? But the value of women, let's talk about it. 200 female goats and only 20 male goats? You, ha you have to understand your value, ladies. You have to understand your value. If you look at everything in creation, if it's a plant that has to bear fruit, it has to be a female seed plant. If it is a, a, a natural reality, a human who has to bear fruit, it has to be a woman. If it is anything you can think of, <laughs> it, it has to be a woman. To bear fruit. And now see. That's a thing. Don't get me wrong. I respect the LGBT community. Y'all have done nothing wrong to me. I got love for everybody. But on the same time. We have to understand what's written. We have to understand. The value of, of what's written. The rainbow. When we're talking about the rainbow. That was the promise. That it would never be destroyed like it was before when it was flooded that was the promise he told Noah that he was going to put the bow in the sky as a reminder of his promise and we have taken that and we have turned it into something that even the great book tells us is an abomination 
And I can speak against it. Because I was one of the ones who thought I wanted a woman. So we have to understand structure. Okay. He instructed the one in the lee. Oh, I'm sorry. He instructed the one in the lee. When my brother Esau meets you and asks, who do you belong to? And where are you going? Who owns all of these animals in front of you? So when you see my brother and he, you know what I'm saying? He get to asking questions. <laughs> when you see my brother and he get to asking questions, this is what you need to just say to them, okay? Just tell them this right here. They belong to your servant, Jacob. They are a gift sent to my Lord, Esau, and he is coming behind us. So tell him I'm coming. Just tell him I'm coming. He instructed the second, the third, and all the others who follow the herds. You are to say the same thing to Esau when you meet him. See, that's structure. He took some time to himself when he sent them off. Remember, he told them to keep some space between the herds. So the further he came along, he was going to meet one. This is what you say to him. And for all the remaining herds, he told them to be the exact same thing. Just tell him that I'm coming. But it was going to buy him some time because he would have to stop and converse with, with each one of the herds. Right? So that why you have to understand structure and timing timing being everything okay knowing the season that you're in he also instructed the second and the third you know following her tone when you meet him same thing he's come behind us i will pacify him with these gifts i am sending ahead later when i see him perhaps he will receive me so he he thinking in his head he buying some time maybe by the time he get here he'll be all right with me because i didn't you know gave him everything i had <laughs> gave him everything i had and so by the time he get here maybe he'll receive me so jacob's gift went ahead of him and he himself spent the night in the camp so now Jacob is by himself. He is alone. Okay. The night Jacob got up and took his two wives, his two female servants and his 11 sons and crossed the ford of the Jabbok after he had sent them across the stream. He sent all, oh no, he sent over all of his possessions. So Jacob was left alone and a man wrestled with him until daybreak. So Jacob, he dead by himself. He didn't send his wives, the servants, the children, everybody that was lastly left close to him that he hold most near and dear. He done walked them across the fort of Jabbok and he sent them across the streams with everything that he had. And so Jacob was stripped. He had to let go of some things, right? And when Jacob became alone, a man wrestled with him. Until daybreak, well, if he was alone, who was he wrestling with, right? When the man saw that he could not overpower him, he touched the socket of Jacob's hip so that his man was wrenched by a... a his hip was wrenched as he wrestled with the man. <laughs> Sorry about that, y'all. Then the man said, let me go for it is daybreak. Okay, so this, they done wrestled all night. And we need to note that, y'all, that he touched his hip. We're going to get into that. We're going to explain what, what, what's, why did that phase him so bad that they had to mention it? Yeah, it didn't break him because he still had on something until that sun came up now. Jacob replied, I will not let you go until you bless me. I done had to lose everything. I'd have had to come try to sit and find myself and I had to toil and tussle with you all night. The sun done came up, ain't got no rest, ain't letting you go until you bless me. Sometimes that's what it takes. It takes you being that frustrating. You done, you done took all my energy from me. You, you done, I done had to do everything 
give up everything. After I, I, I came here with a little, you doubled it, and, and still I have to lose yet again? Sometimes it takes that. But you have to understand that in that process, for Jacob, it be, built character. It built character. It showed Jacob that he had the strength to let go of everything if he needed to. It showed Jacob that he had the strength to keep a gracious heart and still want to take care of other people before himself. It took strength. He could have very well left everything that he had with them people right there where they was and, and just took off, ran off, and then cried out to God. But no, he said, listen, this this is my burden to bear to begin with. So, so allow me to bless you. Even in the midst of me losing everything, allow me to bless you, keep you safe, and still just become frustrated and ill. But he ain't want nothing else, y'all. All he wanted was a blessing. The man asked him, what is your name? Now that's part. They done, they done sat up there and fought all night long, y'all. <laughs> they done sat up there and fought all night long and he don't even know the man's name. Okay. <laughs> what is your name? Jacob, he answered. And the man said, your name will no longer be Jacob, but Israel. Because you have struggled with God and with humans and have overcome. My goodness. You have struggled with God. You not, not, not got your blessing and then counting them out. Stop praying as soon as you got what you wanted. Not, not, uh, not running to God or being so scared of God because you, you think you so messed up that God ain't going to accept you no more. Nah, he struggled with God. And with humans. So he, he was having a spiritual battle all within himself. And on the same time, he still had to fight the world. And yet he have overcome. Jacob said, my name is Jacob. God told him, your name ain't Jacob no more, son. You struggle with God and you pass the test. So allow me to change your name. Your new name is going to be Israel. It's going to be Israel. This is your name for moving forward. Okay? And Jacob told him, please tell me your name. What was your name? But he replied, why do you ask my name? <laughs> Woo. And he blessed him from there. So Jacob called the place Peniel, saying, it is because I saw God face to face, and yet my life was spared. The sun run, rose above him as he passed Peniel, and he was limping because of his hip. Therefore, to this day, the Israelites do not eat tendon because, uh, or the tendon attached to the socket of the hip because the socket of Jacob's hip was touched near the tendon. Okay, so boom. We got Peniel. So we're going to jump back over to the presentation before moving forward because woo -wee, that's powerful, y'all. He didn't... I am that I am. That's when the name was given. I am that I am. That W, the Y, W, H. Y, H, W, H. I'm sorry, y'all. It was looking funny in my mind. <laughs> the Y, H, W, H. If you breathe in and breathe out, there's your Y, H, W, H. The breath of life. Can't move without it. And as long as you're taking that in, you should be valuing and honoring that you're getting another chance in this body to do that. Striving every day to become a better person. Because sometimes, hey, look, you gonna go through it. My boy done had to lose everything. And then had to stay up all night fighting with God. Man, could you imagine? 
He was weary. He was tired. But he had just enough wind within himself to make a conscious decision. I ain't letting you go, God, until you give me a blessing. Because, uh-uh. What is this? <laughs> okay? But we're going to go into the breakdown. Hold on. I was supposed to be going back over to the presentation, y'all. All right. So we're going to do new share. And we're going to head back on over to the presentation. Okay? <laughs> All right. So we got Jacob wrestling with the guy. And here's the breakdown. So we'll see here because there's a couple of things up here. Oh, I made myself bigger. All right. So the angel, remember, it grabbed his hip. It grabbed his hip. And not only that, but it kind of it hurt my boy. It threw him a little off course. He still ain't give up, though. But it threw him a little off course. It hurt him real bad. And the importance of that hip structure is this is where your sacral chakra is going to store energy, right? Um, so some signs that you have a blocked sacral chakra is going to be detachment, which we've seen with Jacob because he had to detach from some things, right? Isolation, we, we saw where he became lonely. He needed some time to himself. Anxiety, he became fearful. And in a panic, he made a decision and quick to split up into two groups. But scripture told us he became fearful. Um, loneliness, which we, I think I already covered that one. Well, isolation and loneliness to go hand in hand. When he got by himself, I'm sure he probably was a little lonely, feeling a little low. But I ain't stop my boy. Um, for low libido, mm, y'all see it. And then um, a lack of creative inspiration. This force that, you know, builds up right here, this is going to be your creative force, your creation. It's in your hip, you know, the, you know, the cervix and all of that, where it all sits within that position. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But all of that plays a, uh, a factor into having a block sacral chakra. Um, and we're going to play this right here from seeing Moana. It's the portion in the movie where she kind of, you know, figured things out. Um, some people, sometimes they can seem so just disastrous because they're hurt. They're broken, right? And it takes for a special person to actually see you for who you truly are and have the ability to, cha to, to change your name, right? So let's see what Moana had to say here. Uh, sorry y'all angry hurt broken heart had been stolen the your name in the heart from inside you but this does not define you mm -hmm. 